<laughs> G'day everybody, thanks for stopping by. Feel like a quickie? Yeah, me too. If you've been following the channel recently, you may have seen the video where I did the diesel filter, uh, the, the in-tank diesel filter uh, on the Pajero here. I've been having some power issues where it feels like it's running out of power at the top end. Basically that's been presenting itself for a while and I've just never got around to doing anything. I've always just put it down to the fact that it was probably just going to be the intake manifold just getting clogged up and eventually I was going to have to reach into my back pocket, pull out my wallet and uh, get that sorted. I actually have this booked in. Now I'm in the Lake Macquarie type area around Newcastle, New South Wales, Australia, for those not around the country. I've actually found somebody located at Warners Bay. They're called Advantage Diesel. Now they do tuning and modifications and all that sort of stuff. I did originally get in touch with them at the end of April and it's not going in until the 17th of May. So there's quite a long lead time to get in. I think it may be just one or two guys, a small little place. Uh, but hopefully they're good. I'm going to have a chat to them and just see if they can get me some pictures, whether they might even let me come down and do a little bit of filming when they're doing the intake, particularly when they take it off. And uh, and then I'll share it with you and we'll let you know what, you know, a Pajero with 230, 240 odd thousand Ks intake actually looks like. So when I called them, I said, look, what I want you to do is try and diagnose this power issue for me. And at the very least, I want a manifold clean done, uh, off car. I don't want one of those spray ones done. Uh, and I also want you to do the valve clearances and I want you to replace the uh, timing chain tensioner as well As we all know that should be done and while they've got it all apart I want it all done Mickey Mouse and I'll get them to chuck in the service there as well All good still several still a few weeks away before it goes down there I don't know these guys from a bar or so I called another mechanic locally and said look I've got a diesel This is what I want to happen. He said no you need to call these guys these guys look after you These are the boys to see so so that's why we're going to advantage diesel Advantage Diesel Performance uh, and just looking at their Facebook page uh, and their website they did lots of modifications so the old Pajero down the driveway shouldn't pose too much of a problem I don't think for these boys and depending on how everything goes um, I've always wanted to get an exhaust done uh, so an exhaust and a snorkel uh, and then maybe look at getting it chip tuned or getting it tuned as well so uh, we might uh, see how these guys go I'm going to report back we'll let you know how it all turns out uh, whether there's any performance increase and hopefully we can get some footage um, or at least some pictures of what the intake looks like uh, so I give you a bit of an idea and for my own curiosity as well in the meantime I thought I might just do some of the simple stuff clean airflow sensors and stuff like that and just try and I guess tick a few boxes just to make sure that I've done those things so he's not chasing his tail it saves me time uh, or saves him time uh, which in turn saves me money the other day I took the car out for a quick run thinking look I might just take it for one quick run before I do a few things just see how it's going and had I been paying more attention in the past I would have realized that this is very similar to an issue that I'd had before in that if your issue is the same as mine when I first when it's cold and I'd come out uh, in the morning and I'll take it for a run it runs like a dream it, it accelerates it speeds up uh, it changes gears fine all that sort of stuff you know your life's hard when <laughs> anyway back to the topic at hand I hadn't been paying enough attention uh, when I was running into the issue but what would happen is I'd take the car out in the morning or I'd take it out first take it for a drive and the car would seem to be fine it would be at the end of a drive once the car had warmed up and I would be coming back home or whatever the case that's when the issue would really present itself and get a little bit more exaggerated. But you'll see here in this video, I was out doing some four-wheel drive with some of the boys and uh, it was going up over the top of this crest. We did the little four-wheel drive section and then going up over the top of this crest. This is exactly the problem I was facing. When I had to put the boot in, the car was warm. Um, just when I needed that power, that's when it would disappear, certainly at that top end.
When it heats up, I start having an issue. And that's what said to me, I've seen this before, I know what this is, this is a vacuum hose issue. So what I did, now when I did this last time, it was a few years ago, uh, I'd been away on the cells trip. There's a video up there with the cells trip that I did with Steve. She presented itself there. A similar thing, once the car warmed up, was filthy hot days, it really kicked my backside and just lost all power. Didn't want to change gears, all that sort of stuff. Let's go down to Super Cheap and pick yourself up some of this vacuum hose. Now, there are two different sizes. What I found worked for me was the four mil. That's a four mil inner diameter. Just reading the writing on the side of this. On the box, it certainly said window washer tubing and vacuum hose. But I am having a look at this, and it does say that it is maximum of 25 PSI, which in my mind is pretty low. So I'm going to have to keep an eye on this, but the point is, go down your local shop, whatever, mechanics, whatever it is, and get yourself some hose, 4 mil um, inner diameter, so I think it's around about 7 outer, 4 mil inner. I did also grab myself some 3 mil as well, it's actually 2.8 inner diameter. And you'll see the difference, hopefully, hopefully you can see the difference in those. This is the 4 mil, this is the 2.8. Um, so I grabbed both of those just because I couldn't remember. I found that the 4 mil worked on everything that I needed to replace. This is what I replaced. This is all, certainly one of the sections that I replaced. And you can see on the end of that, you can see how open these ends are. Now this is one of the ends that was uh, being pressed onto one of the tubes. Uh, in the car and you can see how open that is so when I was I, I don't think I've necessarily got any splits in any of the hose I certainly couldn't find any but I wasn't looking that hard I was replacing it anyway it didn't matter to me certainly see how open some of these ends are here compared to the 4 mil and I think you can see how stiff this is compared to this like you can see the bend I can get in that and how pliable and soft this is but this is quite stiff uh, it's rigid, it's getting hard. Because I replaced it all a while ago, probably a few years ago, that's how quickly this stuff starts to get stiff and I guess gets at the risk of cracking and breaking, whatever the case may be. And what I should have done, or what I'd probably recommend to you at this stage, is just grab three meters of this one, because I also want to get in, I need to remove the air box though, and get in and replace the vacuum hoses on the solenoid for the four-wheel drive system. So I'm gonna get down and do that as well, but I'm gonna to need to grab some additional hose. If you're having the similar issues in that you're having a power issue and they get worse as the car warms up, you can usually, I'll say usually, not always, uh, but you can quite often think that it is hose related because as your hose warms up in the car or the day, they get softer and if you've got a split or something, it starts to open up more uh, once a car warms up, or certainly if you've got uh, connections that aren't sealed very well, again, the rubber gets hot, it gets more pliable, it stretches, and it just doesn't hold the seal. So if you're having an issue where your car gets warm, gets worse, check your hoses. Intake hoses um, and turbo hoses as well, um, they're worth looking at at the same time. Certainly if you've still got the rubber ones in there. I did promise you a quickie. Let's get this sorted. We're gonna jump under the bonnet, and I'm just gonna show you all of the hoses um, that I replaced some of them. I don't know what they go to I've literally just grabbed all the hoses and replaced them I think was it main issue was the one to my wastegate on the turbo when I pulled on that It just slipped off like it was barely even holding on so whether it was the only issue. I don't know again Swap them all just do them all like while you're in there. It's a piece of cake anyway Let's go back to the front of the car We'll jump under the bonnet and I'll just show you all the hoses that I swapped out and give you a bit of a pointer so you know what you're looking at if you want to do the same. So first thing you want to do is take this engine cover off and there are just four Phillips head screws. So one, two, three, four. I'm only taking that off because I love you, but we're still not doing butt stuff. So. Let's get have a closer look. Okay, here we go. So you can see here, we've got like a solenoid or something. I don't even know what that is. Don't know what it does. 
Uh, but you can see here, there's the two hoses that come off. And they basically go down there. So one goes here. This is the one here. This is the, the left one. And the other one. And the other one comes down. And the other one comes down here. Hopefully you can see that. I know the lighting's not the greatest, but it's a bit of a pain in the backside. So that's those two there. Yeah, uh, they're probably, you know. I don't know, 12 inches or something each, not that much. We've got the one up here off the back of the manifold, goes up to that sensor. Then on this side, so this is our air box, uh, radiator obviously, so this is the uh, driver's side of the engine. This one here I replaced, so take that off. You can see this is actually two sections, uh, so there's this thing in the middle, I don't know what that is, I don't know if that's a little filter or something along those lines. Uh, but you'll get two sections of this. This actually goes and attaches onto the side of the engine here. Hopefully you can see that. There's the pipe coming out there. So cut yourself one length. This is like a little heater shield or a rub shield. So put that back on. And that was just sitting somewhere like that. There was some clips in here holding this on, but mine have obviously broken off and, and are gone. I could probably put a couple of uh, cable ties or something to hold that there. Cut yourself two lengths, the one main section here, throw this back in, make sure you get the right way. I don't know whether that's directional or not. Uh, and then just a short length, which is, you know, I don't know, seven, eight centimeters, something along those lines here. And then that just fits back on just here. And you can see how much effort that's taken to feed that back on, little bit of spit. Does good. Uh, so that's that piece of hose there. Is this bit of hose from the wastegate on the turbo? So this again has a little bit of rubber shielding, which should be down there. Um, so it comes from the wastegate here and just goes over to the side of the engine just there. This is why I took off the engine cover because it was just too hard to get your hand in here. Uh, it was easy enough to pull this one off because literally I think this was the hose that was my issue uh, When I grabbed it, it literally just fell off pretty much. So once I put that one back on Everything seems to be Mickey Mouse. So that one again, that one's probably I don't know 20 centimeters long, maybe uh, So that's that one there. Yeah, so literally for me those were the only four hoses or five hoses that I replaced uh, and everything has come good. So I'm also going to get in and just do the vacuum hoses on the solenoid down here. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to get you some vision of this here. Go to the front of the engine down here. You can see these are the vacuum solenoids which are responsible for the switching of your four-wheel drive system. So when you use your Super Select uh, and you switch it from you know, too high to four high, etc., etc. If you are having issues with that and it doesn't seem to be working, it will be worth, again, just for the price and the time, how easy it is to get done, going in here and swapping out these hoses. So you can see there's a few hoses down here um, that uh, come to these and leave these solenoids. So it'll be worth replacing those. Um, these do go to a hard line at the back. Uh, and then obviously down to your transfer case, etc., down underneath. So um, these are the ones that I'm yet to replace. I did do these last time, haven't done them this time. Again, I think my issue has been this hose up here uh, and was sort of the one that was giving me grief. The other ones that I just want to replace but haven't done at this stage, if we go to the back of the airbox, you'll see these hard line hoses here running along and then going down under the car so you can see there's some hard line stuff which then turns into again the rubber stuff down here um, so this is all part of the four-wheel drive super select systems going down under the car there so um, so that comes from the front um, from those solenoids and goes down uh, to your gearbox etc and under there while well, I've got that little bit of extra hose I might as well swap this one out at the front well, this is all part of the vacuum system, so you've got a if so if you've got a leak anywhere in this, it can cause you the same issues that I've had. Oh, I've got some extra hose, and there's this one that comes from the front of the engine, uh, and then goes down beside the airbox, comes onto this position, 
I think that's it here, coming into this position here. So we're just going to, these on there pretty good, but we're going to pull that off. If I can, there we go. And we'll take that out and we might as well swap that out while we've got the extra hose. Things that I noticed uh, after I did the vacuum hoses, in addition to the power coming back, after I replaced the hoses, I jumped back in the car and started her up, just gave her a little bit of a rev, as you do, and one thing I noticed was I could hear the turbo spooling up, which I hadn't not noticed for a while, if that makes sense. So I hadn't heard the turbo spooling up for a while, but I hadn't realised I hadn't heard it, and certainly when I jumped in and uh, put the foot on the accelerator, I can hear that spilling up, so I reckon that one down near that wastegate was definitely my problem. The other thing I'd noticed was fuel economy has improved. Again, it's been a slow thing, you know, progressing, but on the freeway, even on freeway, I was getting sort of 14, 15 uh, litres per 100. Now, the first run after I did the vacuum hoses, I did probably 100, 150 odd Ks just to test it, make sure it warmed up, make sure that wasn't uh, still there as far as an issue goes. 10.5 litres per 100. Now, I haven't seen 10.5 on that thing for I can't tell you how long. Uh, so 10.5 versus 14, 15 per 100 on the freeway. It was certainly up around 18 and 20 sometimes around town. So that in itself is worth doing. Just to be clear, this may not be your issue, uh, but I've just jumped on and done a quick scan of some websites again. And everybody's like, clean your sensors, you know, do this, do, like coolant sensors and... Um, all these other sensors and stuff they're telling you to clean, uh, but it wasn't until I got to the third page They're saying check your exhaust and all this check your EGR and all this sort of stuff But it wasn't until I got to the third or fourth page that somebody even mentioned the vacuum System is worth looking at so that's why I'm doing this because it's such a piss simple fix or if it's not a fix it's certainly worth your time and your money being that it doesn't require much of either of those to get in and give this a crack so just wanted that's why i want to do the video uh because yeah i just I don't, I don't know whether many people are aware of it there you go now i know that wasn't quite the quickie that i promised you but uh we are done and literally i just wanted to show you something that if if you're running into a similar issue to mine power issues specifically top end i was running out of guts um as the issue has progressed, it's gotten worse uh, to where I was having those issues, even just sort of at normal speeds, you know, 20, 30 kilometers an hour. Um, I'd put the foot down, the power just wasn't there, it just didn't want to take off. Had I been paying more attention, I would have realized that it was exaggerated or it would get worse when the car was heating up, when the car was warm, it was running fine when it was cold, um, which should have told me that I need to go and look at hoses again just because how they react to heat uh, particularly if you've got a cold day like a cold morning or something like that yeah, you go out and start the car runs great drive it for an hour or whatever it starts to heat up or on hot days it runs like a bag of shit uh, then this might be one of your issues and it's certainly worth looking at I did go and clean the MAF sensor as well which is literally just at the top of the airbox here two Phillips head screws might as well show it to you while we're here now if you're gonna pull this out just be careful with it because it is a delicate part of the car and that just pulls out and you can see you've got I think it's like a little resistor or something just here with a couple of legs on it you see that there so just get go down to super cheap it'll just be MAF and MAF airflow sensor cleaner specific stuff I just use carb cleaner previously I've bought the the MAF sensor cleaner because you know these are supposedly so delicate and whatever you don't want to bucket bugger it certainly don't touch it with your fingers and try and wipe it with your fingers you really just want to spray it you want a zero contact clean on it i think contact cleaner i think you may be able to use i, I use carb cleaner on it um, mainly because i did some reading and others were using carb cleaner out with it no ill effects and there were certainly some products on the market that are carb uh, slash math sensor cleaner so uh, and I haven't had any issues. Uh, you'll generally just find that it gets a little bit of dirt or something like on it that can impact uh, on its sensor reading. Uh, so just get a spray, spray it from both sides. Uh, try not to touch it if you can. Uh, and then just let it dry 
and don't start the car while it may be wet it may throw some codes and stuff like that so just leave it out let it sit there let it dry out and that's why you use the specific stuff because it dries out really quickly uh, and then just drop it back on job done i mean these are just literally some things you know if you've got a weekend spare and a few bucks in your pocket i mean this job i was gonna say costs nothing but you've got to get the spray and you can call it preventative maintenance you can just call it maintenance call it whatever the hell you want uh, but realistically for the time it's going to take in the cost there's no reason why you shouldn't and that's it jobs are good thanks very much for stopping by get the hell out of here i'll see you on the next one no no, no. really yeah okay yeah I, I love you so what you need to do is subscribe put the bell on come back later on me and you we'll talk eh but now you can get out of here i've got business to attend to